Praise the Lord. Let the church say at the final amen you will testify amen amen look at the person on your side eyeball to eyeball and tell him tell her amen and at the final amen today this final day look at this Day number one, day number two, day number three, day number four, day number five, and here we are today, day number six. Amen. Today, you will carry go. Salvation, carry go. Healing, carry go. Deliverance. Every kind of miracle you need tonight, the Lord will shower his blessing upon you in Jesus' name. At the final, amen, I will testify. Say that at the final, amen, I will testify. Father, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. You're a good God, a great God, for God so loved the world. And that love is still here today, flowing in the direction of everyone. I pray, Lord, tonight, none will miss the manifestation of the love of God in Jesus' name. Bless everyone without exception. Men, women, brothers, sisters, Young people, children, everyone here, everyone everywhere, bless everyone in Jesus' name. It is done. So be it in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're coming from Daniel chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 have you seen have you noticed in all those chapters God's power never failed everywhere in all those chapters it shows us how great he is how mighty he is miracle worker and blessing everyone that trusts in him even a man like Nebuchadnezzar who had worshipped idol who reared up idol and who was very cruel at the time when he turned to the Lord and repented mercy came upon him mercy is coming upon you the miracle of mercy salvation by his mercy and righteousness redemption by his mercy everything is coming upon you tonight in Jesus name and now we come to the final chapter of Daniel and we're looking at Daniel chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 1 and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince angel which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble there shall be a time of trouble does that surprise you before the flood a time of trouble at the time of the flood a time of trouble does that surprise you when Nimrod when he raised up the tower of Babel they were scattered a time of trouble look at Joseph a time of trouble and look at the children of Israel in Exodus and they were in Egypt a time of trouble and look at them as we are passing through the wilderness a time of trouble they got to Canaan and all the confederacies of the kings they were against them a time of trouble move on fast and come to the New Testament when Jesus came look at the situation of the land a time of trouble and 
then it now says as we come to the end end of the age at the end of life have you read your newspapers of late a time of trouble have you listened to the news on television or radio a time of trouble have you looked in depth in africa every country from here to there a time of trouble are you hearing about what is going on in the west whether it's russia or it is Ukraine, or whether it is, you know, all these other places in the West, everywhere, north and south and east and west, a time of trouble. Trouble has always been there, but there's going to be a time of the climax of trouble. But thank God you have Christ, the Prince of Peace. And in all the trouble, the Lord will preserve your life. It will watch over you. It will thrash. It will destroy. It will get rid of every kind of trouble in your life. In Jesus' name. Even tonight, any trouble there, the Lord will clear it away. Even tonight, here at the Alpha location, and then over there, online, where you are. What's troubling you tonight? What's perplexing your mind tonight? Christ, the one that stops and quells and calms. The stormy sea will uh, come into your life tonight. And all the storm, all the trouble, all the trauma, all the difficulty, all the perplexity, everything, it will take away. And then it says, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to the same, to that same time, and at that time, it says, Thy people shall be delivered. Our people shall be delivered. Your family will be delivered. Our friends will be delivered. Anyone that comes and he says, I believe in Christ. I hide in Christ. I believe that he came so that all my problems are solved. Our people will be delivered tonight. Everyone that shall be found written in the book everyone found written in the book it's not saying in a book if it says in a book that means everybody that book or that book or that book everyone that is written in one register or the other but it says everyone that shall be found written in the book that's talking about the book of life where god puts the names of the people that have believed on him and everyone who has his name in that book troubles over tribulation over and all those things that try to bury you alive tonight, everything over in your life. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust. Now, how does somebody sleep in the dust? It's not saying those who sleep on the ground. No, not that. It's not saying those who sleep on the dust. Not that. Those who sleep in the dust. Who are those people? Somebody dies. And then they dig a hole. They dig some the burial ground. And they dig the dust out and they lay the person is dead they lay him there and they put all the dust back and is lying down and sleeping in the dust that means those who have died and they are buried it says and many of them that sleep in the doors of the earth shall awake it's talking about the day of resurrection it says they'll hear the voice of the son of man and they will awake some to everlasting life those who are reaching in the book of life and they will arise they'll awake they resurrect and they go to eternal life some to shame and everlasting contempt 
to shame and everlasting contempt. When they were here, they didn't serve the Lord. Their names were not written in the book of life. Maybe they were religious. Maybe they can quote Psalm 23. Maybe they can read the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. But they did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and their lives. They did not show that they believed the Lord. They will also rise, but they rise to the resurrection of the unjust, the resurrection of the unrighteous. Look at verse 3 here. In verse 3 it says, And they that be wise, you'll be wise tonight. I said you'll be wise tonight. There are only two kinds of people in the world the wise and the foolish. And he's talk, not talking about the wisdom of books, the wisdom you gather from the library, the wisdom you gather from the philosophers, the wisdom you gather, all those philosophers of the past. Have you heard about them? Socrates and, and Plato and Aurelius and all those people, all those people, they themselves were not wise. They might be worldly wise. They were not heavenly wise. They might be temporarily wise. They were not eternally wise. They were not wise in the things of God, in the things of heaven. They were walking on the Broadway, the Broadway that leads to perdition. But this will make a choice, the wisest choice you can make in your life. And they that be wise, Timothy, I thank God for you because you have known the scriptures which is able to make you wise unto salvation. That the wisdom is talking about wise. They that are wise shall, be, shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. I came to show you tonight how the light will shine in your life. I came to show you tonight how to turn from being foolish and then you become wise. I came to show you tonight how your name will be rich in the book of life and heaven will recognize you and any trouble in your life, everything will vanish away. Tonight I'm talking on becoming wise and shining as stars till and beyond the end till the end from now until the end how you become wise and how you become a shining star until the end and then after the end has come and you have gone to the other side and you carry that wisdom of salvation with you then you rise up and you will live in life eternal forever and ever i pray that on this final day of this crusade december of this year 2022 i pray that this heavenly wisdom will come into your life we're looking are three things here. Number one, the time of trouble before the end. The time of trouble before the end. That's verse one. And then number two is the triumphant and the transgressors. The triumphant and the transgressors at the end. And sometimes those two people, they live in the same house. One triumphant, the other one a transgressor. Sometimes they, they go to the same church, like the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, and they have heard about the coming of the Lord. Sometimes those two people, they carry the same kind of lamb, they carry the same kind of doctrine. One is triumphant, the other one is a transgressor. What happens to them? at the end. Number three, the treasure for the transformed who endure. Those are the people, they have the treasure of salvation, the treasure of the life of Christ, the treasure of the hope that they are looking forward to when Christ will come, the treasure of the transformed who endure and be endure to the end. I pray you'll be a treasure in the sight of the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at number one here. Number one, the time of trouble before 
the age. Um, you know, let's conduct an interview. Welcome to this village. In this village, all the people that have, are living here or that have lived here since the village, you know, became a recognized village. Has there been anybody that lived all through without any trouble before their end? They said, no. We go to another town and we say, has anybody lived here in this town, in this city, and has never, nobody has ever seen trouble there before they got to the eye. They said nobody, we say it's because it's Africa. And then we go to America, and we go to Canada, and we go to Europe, we go to all those places, and we say, here, we come, we're making some research, we're finding out anybody lives here any time, any age, any generation that had no trouble before he finally came to his end. They said there's nobody, everybody on earth, everybody that has ever lived, everybody that will ever live. The world is a place of trouble. And as people go on to the end of time and to the end of the age, there's going to be a climax in trouble. That's why we're looking at this and we say there's a time of trouble before the end. We've read it already in, um, in uh, this place that is in uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Look at Psalm 50. I'm looking at verse 15. In uh, Psalm 50, verse 10, call upon on me in the day of trouble. The Lord knew that in the world in which we live is a world of trouble. It's an environment of trouble. As long as there's a Satan in the world, as long as there are evil powers and evil people in the world, there'll be trouble. But the Lord is saying, you don't have to be swallowed up by the trouble. You don't have to drown in the sea of the trouble. I'm here. And you can call upon me, call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver thee. Amen. Amen. And I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Maybe there's trouble in your life tonight. And maybe it's I it started in a small way, in a little way, and you said, I'll manage that, I'll tolerate that, I'll overcome that. And the thing was increasing. And everywhere you turn now, the trouble is there. You can see right, left, center, in front, everywhere. In the night, you thought you rest. Look at the trouble there. And in the day, you thought, now this is daylight. Anything going to trouble me, I will see. And look at the trouble, and you look around. You cannot see with the physical, natural eyes, but you know trouble is there. And the Lord says, stop looking. Come to the Lord tonight. Come Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Uh, redemption has come for you today. Deliverance, salvation has come for you today. My question is, my question is, why do we have trouble? Look at Second Chronicles chapter 15, and I'm reading from verse 3. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. It says, for a long time now, Israel, they had the God of the covenant, and the covenant of a God keeping of a God covenant keeping God but nobody to teach them they asked the Bible, they will not read. They read, they will not understand. They understood, but they will not follow. They will not obey. It says for a long season, think about your life. That, that's a problem that for a long season, we had been without the true God. We had some private God somewhere, some strange God somewhere, some idolatrous God somewhere. The God and the Prince of this world, but we what with without the true God and without a teaching priest, without somebody to teach us, we are not many people are not in saying teaching the teaching of the word of God, and it is that teaching and understanding that will clear the trouble away. And then it says, Without law, 
or lawless and because we acted lawless we behave lawless as if we are a law to ourselves and you cannot be it's like the law of gravity is there you say i don't care for the law of gravity i'm going to set up another law that will contradict the law of gravity you cannot do that the law of gravity is to give us understanding and knowledge that when you climb a tree be very careful because the law of gravity is at work if you fall down from there trouble will begin sickness will begin you can crush your bones and you can die the law of god is there spiritually but the people were not walking by the law god look at verse 4 here in verse 4 but when they in their trouble they in their trouble because we didn't have the guiding light and the guiding law and we just did whatever we wanted to do we got into trouble they got into trouble and when they in their trouble turn did turn unto the lord god of israel and sought him he was found of them look at verse 5 in verse 5 in those days in those times there was no peace trouble to him that went out not to him that came in but great vexations were upon the inhabitants of the countries look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says a nation was destroyed of nation trouble and city destroyed of city trouble god did vex them with all adversity because we forsook god and forsook the law of god trouble came but now in verse 7 in verse 7 it says be strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded trouble will pass away today as you come to the Lord and say, I realize the problem, I realize the source, I realize the ground, I, I, I realize what projected and brought trouble into my life, into my family, even into our nation. The trouble, as we turn to the Lord, our time of trouble will be over. Your own time of trouble will be over in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 2. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 2. Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning. This our salvation also in the time of trouble trouble see that our salvation our savior he is the only one trouble is there and it is all over the world and in daniel that we read he said there shall be a time of trouble and now we're praying to the lord and we're saying oh lord we need your salvation we need your forgiveness we need your mercy so that in this time of trouble we will survive you will survive in jesus name now how does that come look at verse 24 of that same chapter 33 and the inhabitants shall not say i am sick trouble of sickness will vanish away the trouble of demon possession will vanish away the inhabitants shall not say i am sick why the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity that's how trouble clears when you've been in trouble and then you see it's because i've not obeyed i've not responded properly to the word of god say god i'm sorry about that i will no more go in the wrong direction forgive me and god is so merciful he forgives immediately and then he says look at that trouble of sickness and that trauma of demon possession and that confusion that wants to scatter your life i forgive you i remove your sickness away tonight it will happen 
in Mark chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 8 in Mark chapter 13 verse 8 here are the words of Jesus Christ himself for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be earthquakes in diverse different many places and there shall be famines and troubles Christ said as we're getting to the end of the age he said there will be pestilence there'll be earthquakes and there will be famines not having enough to eat and we're hungry and gives us answer and we go into compulsory fasting we didn't want to fast but what can we do the little child does not uh, have what to eat have you noticed have you read the news in the world how many people are dying of malnutrition because there is nothing to eat and even what they eat have you seen the pictures of those people that go to the dunk hill and they go to the refuse uh, areas and they're trying to pick what other people are thrown there with all the germs and everything what could they do because there's no food in a time of famine and he says trouble and these are the beginnings of sorrow if trouble is there even at the time of the end now how can we be free from that trouble look at verse 10 in verse 10 it tells us and the gospel must First, be published among all nations. All nations, there'll be trouble in all those nations as we're coming to the end of it. And it is the gospel, the gospel of grace. It is the gospel, the gospel of the open door. It is the gospel, the gospel of our salvation. It is the gospel, the gospel of his power. It is the gospel, the gospel of emancipation. It is the gospel, the gospel of the love of God and we preach that gospel and people link up with that grace and they link up with the opportunity this is my chance and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and we're saved although there be troubles all over in all the nations yet as we give our lives to the Lord and our names are written in the book of life danger will pass over you premature death will pass over you and the trouble of the age the trouble of our time all that trouble will pass over your life in Jesus name that's what Jesus said look at this in John chapter 14 reading there from verse 1 it says let not your heart be troubled how what should I do? The trouble is there, and the trouble oversweeps the whole earth. And we read about it. There is no day in the news in the media that they'll not report that this trouble is there, this trouble is there. Everybody is perplexed, everybody is troubled and cries. Why do you say we should not allow our hearts to be troubled? You believe in God, believe also in me. And then the end of your trouble has come. Believe in God and believe also in me. Look at verse 27 there. In verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you. You belong to him. You believe in him. The storm is on the sea and the seas of the world. They are all raging and there's trouble everywhere. He says, you know me as your savior. I know you as my follower, believer. Believe in me, believe in God. And now my peace, I live with you. My peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. You, let not your heart be troubled. It's all over. I said it's all over. My troubles are gone. My problems are gone. I thought you would say that for yourself. And all those, all those things, trauma, trouble, tribulation, this and that, gone, gone forever out of your life in Jesus' name. Neither let your heart 
be afraid. Look at Second Thessalonians. I'm reading from chapter one, and we're looking at verse seven. In Second Thessalonians chapter one, reading from verse seven, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Paul, tell me, what do you mean? Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will, not I may, I will give you rest. And when Christ, your Savior, your Redeemer, gives you rest, trouble is over. All those challenges of the devil, they are over. It says to you who are troubled, rest with us. He's saying, he had now got the rest. The life of Saul was restless. There's no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. During the day, he went an injurious man, a dangerous man. And he clamped down on everyone that calls on the name of Jesus. In the night, he could not sleep. Everything that he did during the day, all the wickedness and the violence and destruction he did during the day, he did not have rest. And he was still going to Damascus, and on the way, Jesus met him, called his name Saul, Saul. What are you kicking against the pricks? It's a hard thing for you to do that. You don't sleep in the night, you don't enjoy your life, you have the trouble, you have the trauma, and yet you don't know the way to stop. He looked up and said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. Not I was, I am Jesus. He was the one that they killed. They nailed him on the cross. And he said, I'm still alive. And was still speaking. He was buried. And then he rose again. And he went to heaven. At the right hand side of the Father. And he's praying for you. And he's praying for everyone. And now you saw this man restless and troubled. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you persecuted. Hard thing for you to kick against the pricks. I want to change then. I don't have rest. I'm restless. I have trouble. What should I do? Go to Damascus. I shall be shown you what you will do. And now I say, God, then he prayed to the God of heaven. And he prayed in the name of Jesus. And he became a brother, a believer, a child of God. His name reaching in the book of life. And Ananas came and said, Brother Saul rest had come and now all through his life there was peace all through his life there was rest all through his life salvation has come assurance has come and then he says i know that a crown of righteousness is laid up for me in heaven rest forever that's why he said are you still troubled you are in the jewish religion are you still calm and rest with us are you in the gentle religion and you are still trouble come i found it i got it all my troubles are over and all the trauma and the palpitation and the fear of eternity all that is gone away from me to you who are troubled rest with us i invite you tonight come and rest in the lord all your troubles in jesus name are over Sickness is over. And all the challenges you have in, uh, again, in, from the powers of darkness and they trouble your life and torment your life. They drive you here, they drive you there. Come and rest with us and have the rest of Jesus Christ and the peace of the Lord. Your troubles tonight by the grace of God and the mercy of God over in Jesus' name. I'm coming to point number two now. Point number two is the triumphant and the transgressors at the end. Look at this. We're looking at Daniel chapter two, chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some 
to shame and everlasting contempt. Uh, can I explain it to you? Two kinds of people. Look at Lazarus. Look at the rich man. Two kinds of people. Lazarus, he knew God. The God of Abraham and the Abraham of God. Look at the rich man on the other side. He, he knew the name of Abraham. But the grace and the faith of Abraham, he did not have. He was a Jewish man. And he called Abraham father. But he didn't have the personal relationship with the God of Abraham. God was not his father. And then uh, the poor man, Lazarus, died. He was buried, sleeping in the dust of the earth. And then the rich man died, and he was buried, sleeping in the dust of the earth. But it's their body that was buried. Lazarus' body, not his soul, not his spirit. Immediately Lazarus died, his spirit, his soul, was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The body that's left in the dust. And then the rich man died and he was buried. It's the body that was buried, but then he lifted up his eyes in hell, in torment. And then he looked on the other side he saw the spirit body of Lazarus and then he also saw the spirit body of Abraham their bodies had been buried but now he saw the spirit and he said father Abraham I want you to send Lazarus he knows me I know him. He'll dip the finger in water and cool my tongue. And Abraham said, that time is gone. His spirit, his soul was being troubled and tormented. The trouble he didn't see on earth, he was now having that trouble. And it will be forever and ever. And now that Lazarus, like the thief on the cross who repented, I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. The body was still there on the cross, but his soul went with Christ to paradise. And now, on the day of resurrection, what will happen? The body in the grave, the spirit in the great beyond will come together. And the whole man, the body, the spirit, the soul will now go to the everlasting life in heaven or everlasting contempt in hell. And we can make our choice. There are only two kinds of people. The people who believe in Christ, who believe in the Lord, and their names are written in the book of life. And then eventually, when the day of resurrection will come, they will rise up unto life everlasting. But the people who remain in their native depraved and sinful self and they keep they keep on living living in sin without giving themselves the chance to believe in the Lord they will perish and they'll be there forever and ever I pray that today you will make the right choice Jesus will be your savior and when the day of resurrection comes you will rise up and you will have everlasting life in Jesus name uh, look at John chapter 5 uh, two kinds of people and two kinds of resurrection uh, uh, John chapter 5 uh, verse 28 marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice look at verse 29 uh, and shall come forth all in the graves shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation either life 
justification or on the other side damnation i pray you will have the resurrection of the just in jesus name acts chapter 24 verse 15 in acts chapter 24 verse 15 and have hope toward god which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead one of the just two of the unjust resurrection the just those who are justified by faith in Christ those who say I am guilty I know my sin. I know I'm a sinner. But I take you. I accept you. I believe you as my savior. He justify you. You become just. But the people that say, I don't need salvation. I'm good. As good as I am. Maybe you're good. You're good for the earth. But you're not good enough for heaven. You're good to your neighbors. But your neighbors do not see your imperfection. You're not good enough for heaven. I'm all right. You appear all right to your carnal mind. And what do you know? What do you know? Even, even if you go to the hospital, the x-ray can see what you cannot see. What do you know? And you say, I'm all right. Before you get to the x-ray of man, I'm all right. Now you get before the x-ray and you say, uh -uh, why did you wait until this time? You're almost dead. You're not all right. If you're not all right before the x-ray of man, how do you say you're all right before the x-ray of God? You are not all right. If you're going to be all right, come before the Lord and say, Jesus, you are my savior. Jesus, you are my substitute. I know you died for me and I'm, I cannot justify the things I do. You are the only one to make me just. Tonight, he'll make you just. He'll forgive your sin. He'll change your life. He'll make you a transformed person in Jesus' name. And then he will put your name in heaven. He'll be watching over you here. He'll be watching over your name over there in heaven. And when you leave this place, you are going over on the other side. You will get there. Where are you? I said you'll get there. The mercy of God will come to you. The justification of the Lord will come to you. The salvation of the Lord will come unto you. I'm coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the treasure for the transformed who endure to the end. The people that endure unto the end praise the Lord grace will never leave your life mercy will never leave your life look at Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 and be that the wise shall shine the foolish will not shine they don't even shine in this world look at those uh, children who go to school the wise who read to understand the wise child who reads to retain those are, those are the ones that have joy on hand but the one that is foolish and he does not know that he ought to read or to understand or to retain they are disappointed on the reckoning day the day of examination but the people who are wise look at the husband the a wise husband knows how to keep the wife happy he knows how to keep the wife fulfilled that's a wise husband but the one who is foolish he doesn't care uh, she think, he thinks it's a tenant at home and will not even give her attention. Their families break up. They're not wise. In this life, the people that have the peace and the joy and the fulfillment and the people that have the goodness, even in this life, they're the people who are wise. And then uh, when it comes to preparing for heaven, it's the people who are wise. And it says they that the wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever the people number one they are wise number two they themselves turn from sin and to the savior and then what they have got they give to other people and they turn others 
unto righteousness. Let me show you the wise people. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 33. The wise hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Those are the wise people. Repent. The mercy of God is waiting for you. Those are the, ones, the people that listen to that instruction. Be wise. And they repent and turn away from their sin. And then you say, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. The people that listen to that instruction. And they follow Christ. And they follow him because it's going to heaven. The people that uh, they, they say, what shall I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. And thy house. The people that listen to that and they say, I believe. I believe. I believe now. I believe throughout life. I believe for eternity. Those are the wise people. Look at verse 34 there. In verse 34 it says, Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gaze, waiting at the post of my doors. Verse 35 it says, For whoso findeth me findeth life uh, christ is calling you and he says listen to my instruction i'm here to be your savior i'm here to be your redeemer and you listen to that instruction you are wise and then he says and shall obtain favor of the lord verse 36 in verse 36 but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul he that says ah, i don't want salvation i don't want uh, reconciliation with God. I don't want to listen to instruction. It says he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. It's as we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, here am I. I give myself, I yield myself unto you. Then we become wise. Look at Proverbs 23 and I'm reading from verse 15. Proverbs 23 verse 15. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice even mine. My son, you know what's good salvation eternal life what how god will take care of you here on earth and he'll take care of you in eternity and if you listen to that if you pay attention if you give your life to the lord my heart shall rejoice even mine you say how do i do that how do i do that look at verse 26 in verse 26 it says my son give me thine heart that's the wisest thing you can do my son give me thine heart and say i surrender i give myself unto you here i am and then you are wise now and you are wise till all eternity and let thine eyes observe my ways matthew chapter 25 i'm reading from verse 1 matthew chapter 25 and we're looking at verse 1 here it says then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom in verse 2 it says and five of them were wise and five were foolish the wise they took their lambs and then they had the oil the oil of grace in their lamb and the foolish they took the lamb but they had no oil no grace no love no faith in god and he said we're all waiting for the coming of the lord and at midnight it says they had the voice that the bridegroom is come and the people uh, you know they trimmed their lamb but the foolish they had no light because they had no oil they had no grace the love of God was not in them and the, and the forgiveness of God and the goodness of God did not show up in their lives and um, so they went to the wise they said give us of your oil we can't share grace the grace you have you need all the grace you have the salvation you have you have all, you need all the salvation you have the forgiveness you have is only for you 
The forgiveness cannot be shared. Okay, I have forgiveness. You take a bit of the forgiveness and you take a bit of the grace. You don't have anything left. We cannot transfer the salvation to another person. The wise must have the oil of grace and the faith and the love and the confidence in God. And then uh, when the bridegroom came, the wise went in. And the foolish went to scout for oil and all that. And you know there are there are fake uh, oils, and you know you put that in your vehicle, and the whole thing knocks knocks off. And so they seem to they want to hurry. Hey, give me quickly whatever level you have. You have super. You have ordinary. You have whatever. Just give me. And they got something they thought was oil. By the time they got there, the door was shut. Call upon the Lord when He's near. Call ye upon Him while he's near he can hear your prayer let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts and let him call upon the Lord for God today the day of grace and the day of his love the Lord will forgive and the Lord will set you totally free and then your name will be in the book of life in heaven after, after, after that the foolish people came the graceless people came and the people that did not have any connection or the Lord they came and he said Lord Lord we're here it's too late the door is shut but today the door is still open for you the door is still open the door of grace is still open for you and the Lord will forgive you today he will save you today you'll be wise today and they that be wise they'll shine forever and ever in the firmament as the stars of the firmament of heaven today is your day i said today is your day where are you there it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed you want to escape the trouble the storm, the dangers of the world in which we live. Right now, you can raise up your hand. Thank you. God bless you. The final day. The door is open now. Don't wait too long on the, until the door is shut. Raise up that hand and stand up. As you stand up, you are telling the Lord, Oh Lord, I'm here. I want your grace. I want your love. I want your forgiveness. I'm making a wise choice now. And I want this salvation that comes from Christ. As you are raising up your hand, please stand up. And you are telling the Lord, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Raise up that hand and then you stand up. God bless you there online television radio anywhere you are any country you are, you are and you are hearing my voice now this is your day of grace i'll pray with you now raise up one hand lay the other hand on your chest father in the mighty name of jesus i pray for everyone standing now forgive them in jesus name I pray, Lord, you set them free. And on this day of grace, grant them your grace, your forgiveness, your love, and your mercy. Write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O Lord. Saved, free, forgiven. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Uh, I get a state of us here will now come uh, and lead us in this uh, time uh, of counseling. Congratulations. You are welcome. The door of heaven is open unto you. Thank God you are entering now. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Our counselors, please let's move around very quickly and make sure you capture everyone. 
We take all their necessary information, particulars, Make sure you supply the information correctly because now every prayer prayed for you will not miss your target. We travel straight to your house. Travel straight to your address. Make sure if the counselors have not reached you, call their attention. As they are writing your name now, your name is being written in heaven. What a privilege. What a privilege to have your name in the book of life. To have your name in the book of God. Heaven knows you now as you are standing up. Angels are celebrating on your behalf. For so it is written. That angels are rejoicing because of you. And the joy of salvation in your heart as well. Counselors, please let's move around to the far back, to the right. Let's ensure we capture everyone. Write legibly in capital letters. And make sure that the digits of your phone are complete. 11 digits. Anytime you receive message now, it shall be a message of joy for you. Message of victory for you. Message of progress for you. So that's why you need to supply the correct address. And phone number. Contact phone number. Because now, the news you shall be receiving now shall be news of joy for the rest of your life. If you are watching online, you will see a link. Click on it, complete it, and send immediately. Your blessing will reach you. If you are listening via radio or television, you will see the address, the phone number. Send your WhatsApp onto us. Complete the particulars. And the rest of us, tonight is a final night. Final amen. Final miracle. Final amen. And all your troubles are final. Calvary brings final solution to your problem tonight. Final solution to your sorrow tonight. At the final amen, the miracle is dropped into your life. Pray now and say, Oh Lord, this final night with final amen, 
Let it bring final solution to my problem. To my challenges. To my sorrow. To my disappointments. Counselors who are waiting for you, if you are finished, please move inside the people far back. Even to the to the front of the auditorium. On the right, at the center, at the back, on the left. Let's ensure we capture everyone. Some people are still standing at the far back. Please let's ensure we attend to everyone. What a glorious decision you've taken tonight. The decision that causes heaven, joy, and celebration. On the left hand side, close to the fence. Far back, counselors, please let's reach onto them. The rest of us begin to tell the Lord final night, final amen, final solution. Counselors, we are waiting for you. Make sure you get the details. If you are finished, go to the far back. and ensure every individual is captured. Those of us watching online, you have the link there, complete and send. And also those who are watching on television, via radio, let's ensure you send the WhatsApp message and information. Tonight is my night. Somebody say, tonight is my night. Final night, final amen, final solution. Coming on your way now, it is a miracle. Coming on my way, it is a miracle. Supervisors, if you are finished, you wave the flag. So that we know that you are finished. Let's be thorough about it and make sure 
everyone's data is captured. Can you wave the flag if you are through? On the right hand side. Can we see your hand if you are true? Supervisors, can see the counselors coming back. At the center at the back, if you are true, can you signal to Ross? God bless you. The time has come. Can you arise now? Final night, final email, final solution. Praise the Lord. My time has come. Your time of miracle. Your time of healing. Your time of deliverance. The time of supernatural manifestation. Let the church say, I want you to hear the final amen. You will testify. I will testify. Now, you must understand and believe what you say as you believe what he has said. He has said that everyone that calls upon him, he will answer. He even says, while we're still speaking, that the answer will come. And then when the final amen comes, I see the miracle on your life there. Where are you? Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the problem. Every kind of miracle will take place in your life today. Father, in Jesus' name, God of power, God of love, God of mercy, God of forgiveness, and God of miracle. I pray, O oh Lord, touch everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Whatever the sickness, whatever the disease, whatever the trouble, take everything away in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears be opened in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues be loosed in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes receive your sight right now in Jesus' name. The withered hand stretch it out and be made whole. That short leg grow out now in Jesus' name. Elephantiasis, big leg. You cannot even wear the right dress. I pray the Lord will touch you right now. And that leg or those legs will become normal in Jesus' name. Every form of swelling, hernia, tumor, fibroid, hunchback, whatever, come out in Jesus' name. And all those demonic powers, paths of darkness, Militating against your life, walking against your life, I command that evil spirit, evil power, with evil manifestation, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray that every sickness in your body, every disease in your body, every ailment you have, the divine touch is upon you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm the miracle. Amen. To the right, Amen. to the left, Amen. at the center, Amen. at the far back, Amen. everywhere here now at the Alpha location, those online, and those over the radio, television, anywhere you are, I pray the power of the Lord reach you where you are right now. Amen. Rise up and walk. Open your eyes and see. And let the creative power of God work a creative miracle in your life right now. Thank you, Lord. It is done. 
it is confirmed lord at this final amen testimony in every mouth in jesus name we pray praise the lord it is done it is done it is done take up yourself you see the miracle there those blind eyes are open check up short leg growing out check up deafness removed check up and all the things moving about tormenting your life tormenting your body everything is gone now you have the peace of god that has settled in your body in your heart in your soul in your spirit check up and as you see that god has done it now you're sitting on the wheelchair you cannot keep on sitting there you have to use your own strength and uh, which is given to you now and the healing there now and get up you rise up and walk Amen. and as you see what god has done you come out here and we rejoice together our kitty state overseer now to moderate our testimony time